Greetings YouTube, welcome to my latest weapons build. Please forgive the sounds in the background, I have to run my humidifier down in the basement. It is August at this time. Um, so I'm going to be working on a pick style version of something I made some years ago. And this is a bladed uh, six pointed axe essentially, or a pick. And I really love this design, it came out exactly the way I wanted it to. Um, but I didn't take into account edge alignment, something I learned about the importance of after making this. But I still love this project because I sketched it years ago before I ever became a maker. I made the thing and it ended up being exactly as I imagined it in my hand as it was in my head. That was awesome. So, I came upon these uh, large, very large bolts, um, or studded rods, at a, an estate sale and I paid I think I paid um, probably about a quarter a piece for these things and they're very expensive and that was including all the fascinators and I still have three more of these things though I've stripped all the fascinated fasteners from them because I needed them for this project. I think I have a couple of extra washers kicking around. Um, and I'm going to be using a uh, pressure treated uh, baluster and these are readily available. Um, I would prefer to use uh, oak but oak is much more expensive this stuff is is much cheaper uh, this is uh, three bucks a piece whereas the uh, the the oak stuff is 13 so yeah we're going with pressure treated now these things are large so they're going to be hogging out a big chunk of wood when i go through here okay and that does make the object weaker so to counterbalance that i'm going to be using some heavy laggots so I'm going to cut this particular piece of steel in half. It's, it's, it's not light. It's a, it's a quarter inch thick. Um, so after I get those installed, when I know where they are, I will cut this in half, and then I will use this on the sides. Obviously, the, the, they'll be going this way, this way, to really reinforce uh, the, uh, the, the, the whole device. It'll add some mass. This is not going to end up being light. Um, and it, pretty much any, any angle you hit somebody with this is gonna hurt. Um, and, uh, but that'll help reinforce the fact that I will be hogging out so much wood and making the, the wall thickness here a little on the thin side. Um, but, you know, I'm working with what I have at the minute. And again, this is a post-apocalyptic theme, the idea being that you're scavenging things from the aftermath of the world ending and turning them into something else. Now, I wanna put points on these things, but the method I've been using recently has been to use a drill, put the, put a threaded rod into a drill, turn said threaded rod, and then hold it against an angle grinder wheel, um, a, a spinning angle grinder wheel, and it makes a really nice, fast cone. It's a beautiful way of making cones on threaded rods, and it works great for like quarter inch stuff or even three inch inch stuff. This is, this is like three quarters of an inch in diameter. This is a big, 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 beefy boy. I do not have anything that would turn this. I would really need a lathe. I don't have a lathe, sadly. So and I don't have anything I could really jury rig a lathe at this point. Maybe someday in the future I will. At the moment, I do not. So I'm gonna to have to cut the points into these by myself. Um, I'm gonna make this be descending in size like the other one I just showed you. So the top one will be full size. It's gonna end up being something like that. And then the other three, I haven't quite figured out the spacing yet. Probably close to that when I'm done visually. And what I'm probably going to do, because I don't want these to get too short, so I'm thinking of only knocking off an inch if off of this one and then two inches off of this one. I'm going to measure those right there and see what those are. And whatever that ratio is between the points is the ratio that's gonna end up here or close to it. I'm not gonna make myself have to split 16th of an inch, obviously, but I wanna get, I like that ratio, that, that, that the descending size, so that will be mirrored here. Um, and then I will, once I've got the length cut, I will then use uh, my angle grinder to try to cut a four-pointed, uh, a four-pointed point on each one. And that's gonna be a little bit more difficult to do than just turning them, because it takes a like, good deal more accuracy. Now the irony with this is that, but I, I will cut the first one, and by the time I get to the third one, I will have figured out how to do it better. It's kind of frustrating. The problem being is that this is something that I don't do often, 
um, and it is something in this particular case that will only be done once with this these three sets um, and it's it's the nature of, of figuring things out and acquiring skill this one is not going to look as pretty as these two will at the end it's but it is what it is so now it's time to uh, figure out how I want to put them in here drill the holes get it mounted see how I like the look and everything and before, make, make sure I have the ratios I want and then cut these to size and then start working on the points so the next time you're going to see this is probably going to have holes in it and those uh, I will probably have cut to length so I decided to go with the same ratio as the other one which is one inch so this is ten nine and eight um, I don't want the two inch spacing um, now that I look at it maybe I should go a little bit further maybe three but I'm gonna live with it these have been cut to roughly the same length um, and now I need to work on I need to put points on these ends I want to put 45 degree angle points on those and then I want to put a bevel on the others because because you notice I put a point on here not a great one but essentially a 45 degree point so when I get this finally mounted and it's actually going to go this way because that one's going to be the 45 uh, I want to put a bevel on it so it kind of blends in with this so, it's the, so you won't have this square transition into a, a, a slope. So I'm going to put a 45 degree uh, angle on that so that it'll go like this. So it'll look a little more uh, cohesive like it's supposed to be there. And I am probably going to put a fastener. Oh, I know I'm going to put a fastener here, here, and then here. So you're going to end up again with an asymmetric, but I want this to really be beefing this up. So I want to get it on, on, on the top, I want to get at least one in the middle, and I want one on the bottom, and I don't want to have to have more than three, because three is enough. Um, and already this thing is, this is a hefty beastie. Uh, I've decided I didn't need the washers, they were too big, and this is going to be fine. Uh, these nuts are large enough that they're going to distribute their weight well across the width of this, and they're almost the same width as the, as the, as the, this piece of wood itself, which is a one and a quarter inches wide, or one and a quarter inches square, and these are close to that size. Um, so yeah, uh, this went very well. I just use a uh, three quarter inch spade bit. That's it. Just my time went through it because I have uh, my drill bit, my drill press set up here as my lowest RPM, which is 180 R RPMs. Uh, revolutions per minute uh, because I do drill almost nothing but steel um, so it does when you're drilling wood you gotta go a little slower because it's it's not really at the ideal I RPM for drilling wood but no you got the job done and now I have chips all over the floor which makes me oh so nervous when I'm working with the sparks because I'm not done yet because I still have to once I get this set up and once I get these um, and I, I figured out where they you know they're gonna come down to here so then I need to know that okay that I can start this start the taper for the octagonal handle here and work down because that's probably where it's going to become a start um, and I'm probably gonna I may put a bevel on these 45s as well because there's a good chance that the user's hand may come in contact with this so I may want to make sure that they're not coming in again against to a square this is going to be a 45 degree point but I don't want to be coming to a square edge like that, that, that may be uncomfortable. So I may put an angle on that one as well. Give it a little bit more uh, uh, visual appeal as well, because you'll see that shiny edge that will be ground in place. Alrighty, so what am I going to do next? I may do these next, get these sorted, and then, because that's going to be a bear. Because what I'm going to want to do is come in probably two inches and then cut some very, very shallow angles. You know, right from the center. Oh, it's gonna be that's gonna be such a pain in the butt because this stuff was not easy to cut. This is hard stuff, and even with my even with a fresh uh, disc on my angle grinder, it, it it was not a, it was slow going. 
The only advantage is is because I'll be coming in here and cutting a wedge. I won't be cutting as much as I was here, which is going through the full thickness. Alrighty, so I'll, I'll cut this, the points on these, uh, grind everything on these, make sure that they're roughly the same length, uh, make sure the angle's the way I want them. Because if they're not perfectly the same length, because at the moment they're not, and I haven't changed that because I'm not done yet, uh, it doesn't really matter a whole lot because as long as I get them the same here, you'll never notice the fact that, that they're opposites from the, you know, they're way on opposite sides. You're never going to notice that they're off by an eighth of an inch or something like that. Uh, yeah, that's the nice thing about these, these kind of projects. My wiggle room is pretty big. <laughs> The laggots are complete and they be beefy boys. Um, this by itself would make a nice little maze. It's going to be much heavier when these installed. Though these are going to get slightly lighter when I do cut the points off. Or make the points. So I am finished with the laggots completely. Um, I have ground uh, bevels on both ends. I think those look particularly good. I think they came out quite nice. Um, I'm actually starting to get control of what I'm doing with this with when it comes to uh, grinding bevels like that. Um, so what I did is I, it, basically I, I laid out this one with it, with my calipers and then I laid this on top and I'm like, okay, now where do I want these things? And I just did it visually. I realized that it doesn't have to be perfect. So I put that one visually the same distance from here as this one was so i'm cool that's good and then this one down here matters even less because it's it's while it's a support it's not doing anything as far as you know having to worry about these holes so i just did one boom 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 then i used this one strapped it to that one clamped it in place drilled one hole pinned them together with the screw and nut left this in place drilled the middle screw that together with a, 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 a screw and nut uh, with a bolt and nut, take the clamp off, draw all the way through, then it came time to lay, lay this out. So I laid out a hole, drill a hole in, the, in through this, I then put put one of these here, one of the put of these bolts I've made um, through the hole, put it on a, put a standard quarter 20 nut on the other end, clamped it down, and just used that to hold it together so that I could then drill the other two holes. So again, I'm taking a piece and making it fit the next piece, making that fit to the next piece. So that there is very little measuring going on in the, for the most part. Unfortunately, speaking of measuring, I wanted to get some things right, like, like the layout, and I discovered my tape died. Yep, my tape measure died. I can't get it to retract. I mean, it's, it's old and it was not expensive. So I picked it up at a an estate jail or something but it was a nice tape measure it had a nice uh breakdown of fractions i like the way the fractions were set up so i'm gonna have to go see if i can find one it's kind of similar to that uh today at the, at the hardware store um i hadn't planned on stopping there but now i need a tape measure and while i'm there i'm gonna get some more quarter 20 rod because i always need more quarter 20 rod because i'm always making bolts i'm always making bolts with my with either standard nuts or with these so yeah, quarter twenty rod is just, is just like a savior for me. Um, so I'm done with this for the day. I've, I've, I've pushed myself as far as I want to go. I'm a little on the tired side. So this is all completed except for those. That's the last step is to put the to put the point on these and the project's complete. So it's a good it's a good stop time. Um, that's that's a good stage at which I'm happy with. So not happy about my tape measure, but you know those things happen. Things wear out. Um, but I am happy with the project and uh, this is going to give all the support in the world that I need because even though I've 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 you know weakened this by drilling three quarter inch holes through it that is going to give me all the support I need really seriously that's they're not going anywhere take my word for it um, I mean I could have gotten away with eighth inch this is quarter inch but I had to quarter inch. <laughs> it was in my shop, sitting around, so that's why I used it. Um, sometimes my projects are uh, based upon what is readily at hand when I start the project. If I can reach over and grab it, it means I don't have to go to the store, that thing is going to end up in my project. So, so far I'm really happy. I got a point on that end, which I think kind of looks nice. I got bevels here, it goes with it. I got bevels here, I got a 45 degree point there. Everything's nice and matching and goes together nicely need a little bit of English to get the bolts through but that's okay I don't mind that so overall very happy with the project so far so next week I'll come in here and I'll figure out how I want to make 
the points and then I will cut them and then polish them up probably with on the ground on the belt sander or something make them look a little bit better um, but they're gonna be four pointed and hopefully they'll be relatively even that's my goal is to have them be as even as possible alrighty so see you next week so I'm now at the stage where I need to start cutting points so I have put a, uh, a roughly a two inch ring on here um, obviously just following the threads just give me an eyeball I have a rough cross in here. I know they're not perfectly centered. I was using a center finding jig, but that's designed really for a scratch tool. Um, and I need to have something more visible than that. So I had to use a marker. So I know they're slightly off center, but they will give me a rough idea. For example, I need to know I need to cut on the right side of that one and the left side of that one. So I'm basically looking for some very rough line because I need to come in here and I need to cut from here to here with an angle grinder on a cylinder. <laughs> this is not going to be simple because I'm, I'm really thinking that the best thing to do here might be just to hog it off with, I'm gonna try it with the cutoff wheel. If that doesn't work, I'll get the grinding, I'll get the, the metal removing disc and I'll use the metal removing disc instead. Not the not the flap wheel, but the, the one that's much more aggressive. I'm gonna try doing it with a, with a cut. I don't know if I can pull it off. That may just be too difficult, but if I can get even some of it off, that will make my life easier on the next stage, which is gonna be refining it into a functioning point. And I gotta do this six times, so I would really like to come up with some method that's efficient. So I'm gonna try getting that off do two vertical cuts this way, this way, rotate it 90 degrees, and then two, two, two the other way. Obviously, things will get easier as I when I get to the third and fourth cut because there will be less material on the part. But um, so yeah, that's what I'm gonna try next. We're gonna see if that works. I have no idea if I'm this skilled. Let's find out. Well, I was able to make vertical cuts. They are asymmetric. Um, and they did not get all the way to the point, but they did hog off some of the material I'm gonna to need to remove. So I am now going to flatten out these two sides because that will give me a much better idea of what I need to remove for the next two sides. And the big advantage is once I get that hogged out, I should be able to actually draw on the flats, which will give me a much better idea of what I'm doing as opposed to kind of like blind, hoping I'm going in with a blade and kind of aiming towards a point. So I'm gonna now take this, cool it down, because it's very darn hot, and then start working on this on my grinding wheel to see if I can get this thing to be uh, closer to the shape that I wanted. So I ground one face, I didn't do the other one, because uh, it'll be a lot easier when I have less material in my way. So now I have roughly a flat from the line I made to the tip. There's the center mine, and I've made it wider so I'm gonna go, go on the left side of that and on the right side of that. So, but now I have a narrower, okay, that, sorry, I'm trying to get that lines in there. It's hard to see, this thing is really damn shiny. There you go. <laughs> you can see those lines right there, now you can see them. Yeah, but get those lines, follow those lines, and uh, hopefully get me closer to my target. And if this works, I have a viable process, then it's just a matter of repeating this over and over again until I get the points I want. And I'm probably going to break this up as in I will do one, get one roughed in, probably finish it, turn it around, do the other one. That way I'm not doing the same thing after cycle after cycle, it kind of breaks up the whole process for me, makes my life a little easier, makes this whole project a little more pleasant if I'm not doing exactly the same thing every single time. So now I'm going to get my angle grinder my cutoff wheel and go right along that line, well, hopefully, and uh, see how it goes. I may have to eat my words because I've discovered the best method of achieving this is to use the flap grinder, flap wheel, here after I've got them cut. So cut the faces off, then use this, which means I don't want to have to set this up twice every single time I cut a face. So I'm probably going to have to cut all of the faces off, rough them, and then come over here and grind them. So that's gonna be very tedious at the end, but you know, it is what it is. But 
this is what we what we end up with and I have to I have, I want to grind these down here because I am gonna have to get nuts on this eventually so I want to make sure there's no burrs in my way but this is not coming to a razor point I don't want it to come to a razor point however it is sufficiently sharp so because um, if it comes to a, it comes to a needle point it, it means that's just gonna break the first time you ever try to use it so I want it to have come to a point but you know not 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 too pointy so that's what I'm gonna go for so now I have to cut the faces off all of them and get them in line with each other I'd like to have that face and this face kind of be together if I can and do that a bunch more times uh, and then uh, we'll get to shaping the handle because once I get these done, the last start process is to shape the handle. Is just put chamfers on the handle, and then it's assembly time. Woohoo! Everything is complete. All my points, my laggots, my shaft, which I've just put a chamfer on, it is all done. Doing those, however, was not seamless because here, here we have a screw up. I end up having to make one of these toys because I came in too shallow on that cut and I didn't catch it I thought I was I thought I had more of an angle the time I realized it I was I was just I was totally screwed um, I was being concerned about getting the getting the, the cutting wheel to make a nice cut and I didn't wasn't paying attention to where the cutting wheel was going so I ended up having to completely scrap this one which was darn near complete it was that was like my second to the last like that was like almost my last cut on that one you know what I mean I had one more cut and I was finished at that point except for the you know the grinding bits and I screwed it up it happens nothing's perfect so now all we gotta do is put this puppy together and here she is completed um, this thing is a beast it is it is it is heavy now it's got me thinking I like this I really do I think it's very cool um, however, it is, it's too large. I think it's too big. I like it and I'm going to keep it and, you know, I'm going to just display it and such, but this is just a little bit too big. So what I think I need is five eighths, not three quarter, separate them by three inches, not two, and use lighter laggots. Use eighth inch one by, one by eighth instead of one by quarter. Again, I used these specifically because I had them in the shop already. They were, this, this was just scrap from something else. So I think that would give a superior appearance. It would be lighter. It would be look faster. It would be lighter. It would weigh, weigh considerably less than this one does. Um, because this thing, again, it's this is a beast, man. Uh, actually, let me get the let me get my scale out. Let's see if we can actually weigh this thing. I don't know if we, I'm going to be able to weigh. It. So we're gonna turn. Let's see if we can get the wood, get this thing on there. Here we go. Let's see if I can get this on here and balanced. Yeah, it's pretty balanced. So we got 2.7 kilos. That's that's a lot, folks. Oh, that's milliliters. Uh... Ounces, pounds, that's six pounds. Yep, I went too far. Uh, oh, sorry. I will tend to prefer grams. Um, that's six pounds. This is, this is way, way, way too heavy to be used, except by the strongest people. Um, which I mean, you could, you could, there's nothing wrong with having something that's in the Matic, you know, mall kind of, kind of vibe. Uh, but your traditional melee weapons, even two-handed ones, we're going to be in the four pounds and under scale. So this is a really big weapon. It's really heavy, very top heavy. Um, when you hit somebody with this, whether you hit it with a point or with the laggots, they're going down. <laughs> no ifs, ands, or buts. Alrighty, time to take it outside, get some shots, um, and then I can get to lunch because it's almost lunchtime. Uh, frequent theme at the end of my videos, it's almost time for lunchtime. Um, and if you don't follow me on Instagram and DeviantArt, you should, because DeviantArt is where I store my images permanently um, for the, uh, all of my projects. And Instagram is where I post uh, weapons builds, sneak previews, uh, bargain finds that I don't bring home, and bargain finds that I do bring from, salvage I find, and of course, cute cat pictures. And who doesn't love 
a cute cat picture. All right, so folks, I hope you enjoyed yourself here, and I hope you come back for the next one.